He was the last of his kind, or maybe not the last after all. From Africa, Jonathan Vigliotti has a cautionary tale. So this is the king of the park. Yeah, this is the last male standing. Sudan, the There's last Sudan. male northern white rhino on Earth. Good boy. Looks as if he traveled here from prehistoric times. And in fact, these mighty creatures have been around for millennia with their supersized horns and thick skin as protective armor, they seem indestructible. But when we met him earlier this month, Sudan was living out his final days at the old Pejeda Conservancy in Kenya. I've worked with him for eight years now, so I know him very well. Here, lions, giraffes, and elephants roam free. Hello, Sudan. But Sudan, at the ripe old age of 45, Sudan. remains under the watchful eye of keeper Zachariah Mufai. He's a great friend of mine. He's just more like my family. So that's why I take a great care of him. Sudan's treatment by his keepers and veterinarian Stephen Ngulu is a lot like hospice care for an aging patriarch. He's a charming guy you know, who is very gentle. He's a gentle giant. He's a very gentle giant. If he were to speak, he would say a lot. Sudan spent most of his life at a zoo in the Czech Republic. His captivity turns out to have been a blessing. He was protected, while northern white rhinos in the wild were poached to extinction. He's become this kind of charismatic animal that um, is known across the planet. Known far and wide because he and these two northern white females, Najin and Fatu, are the last of their kind. Conservationist Richard Vine made a home for them at his wildlife sanctuary. There's no doubt that if northern white rhinos hadn't existed in zoos, then the species would now be completely extinct. The word rhinoceros comes from the Greek. It means, no surprise, horned nose. And their distinctive nose not only gives rhinos their name, but also makes them a coveted target. The reason that rhinos are threatened by poaching is because of demand for their horn, pure and simple. Horn in the Far East is considered to have medicinal properties. In some places, it's become like a status symbol, which is put into drinks in powdered form to cure hangovers if you're a rich person. Hangovers. Hangovers. You know, OK, put yourself in the position of the rhino poacher. If he is successful, he'll be able to sell that for 60,000 US dollars. That, for him, is 20 years' worth of wages. So that's the incentive. It's huge. In 2009, with the northern white population in the single digits, Sudan and his female companions were flown to the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, then carted to the old Pejeda Conservancy, where the hope was nature would take its course. She's beautiful. She is so... They have the curiosity of a puppy, except they're the size of a car. <laughs> yeah, you can't imagine how big it is, but they are so friendly. And they did mate. But... We were expecting to have a baby in a natural way, but it just never worked. Now science must succeed where nature hasn't. We have about 300 milliliters of northern white rhino semen here. Invaluable sperm samples collected from the last of the species are stored in liquid nitrogen at the Leibniz Institute in Berlin. The calculated storage time from these samples is about 3,000 years. Using surrogates, Dr. Thomas Hildebrandt has been perfecting a procedure to harvest rhino eggs from Najin and Fatu, fertilize them with the semen, then transfer the embryo to a healthy surrogate. We are now at the point that we can perform the procedure very safely, and we did that more than 16 times in southern mid rhino females, and we are extremely confident that we will be successful. This dream almost sounds like Jurassic Park. It is, it's very similar. So you could end up with a situation where the, the northern white rhinos all die, and then because we've got their embryos, we can reintroduce them as a species back onto the planet. On the brink of extinction because of human greed, Sudan has had to rely on his human keepers for protection from poachers. That includes an armed security detail. What are they going up against? The people coming here are wily, they're bush savvy, they understand how to operate at night amongst wild animals, and they are skillful with firearms. They are people who will think nothing of shooting back. How dangerous is this work? Well, it's not a walk in the park. Simon Arugo is with the team. We are the voice of those animals. We are the arms. 
So whenever it's post, it's like one of the family has gone down. It's like losing a family member. Yes. And for the past few days, Sudan's family has been in mourning. Just after our visit, his fragile body finally gave way. Caretakers made the gut-wrenching decision to euthanize him. Keeper Zachariah Mafai was by his side. But even with Sudan now gone, Richard Vine hopes that in death, the last male standing will at last bring change. People around the world now know about Sudan, and that for me is his greatest role. We may still lose the northern white rhino as a species, but he will have created a message which hopefully can be perpetuated um, to a wide audience. It's about drawing a line in the sand and saying sooner or later, as humans, we're going to have to change the way we exist on this planet. And if we don't, that's going to be to our considerable detriment.